Namaste. Hi, good afternoon. We have a lot of things going on here in uh, Taiwan. Uh, we had Ghost Month, and I think it's ending today, and I heard a chanting in the background. Anyway, I, 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 I'm never really too sure what's going on, but there's always something. So in case you hear some uh, discordant, the ghosts must not like discordant music. They use it for funerals. Uh, anyway, discordant to my ears. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, I usually tend to share things that have happened to me, that resonate with me, that my experiences, because I can speak them directly. Once in a while I read something, and while this doesn't express my particular experience, uh, I wanted to share it. It's by someone called F. Turner, and it's, I want to say she, I feel a feminine energy, but anyway. She talked about what she personally did to get, to get the system the process rolling. I willed my thoughts to slow. I changed my breathing. I ignored all the incidents that screamed to be recognized. The monkey mind, right? If you can imagine how it is to know things without having to be aware of every detail, like putting in an encyclopedic size file into a zip file and imagining how difficult that would be you will know what it's like to be enlightened don't worry you are being guided by the only guide that matters yourself thank you thank you uh, obviously it's from when we talk about zip files and uh, Obviously, it's probably millennial. I'm guessing millennial female. But anyway, uh, I, I never felt the, 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 the urgency or I never felt uh, anyone was screaming at me. But anyway, but I just share that because today I'm going to do something else that's completely for me. Most of you won't even know what I'm talking about, but uh, anyway, I want to talk about cognizant dissonance and cognizance to have cognition. Cognition is the use of the mind. And I told you that, that the jhana yoga that I practice is finding information, sorting information, gleaming like mining panning for gold getting the nuggets getting the pieces of knowledge from within the information because it's easy to accumulate information but mining it actually working with your mind cognizant use cognizance using the mind to and this was my process using the mind to take information, gleam, mine, harvest the knowledge, store, begin the process of storing and filing, because the knowledge is always useful, but I wanted to refine it one step further, and that refining I wanted to do was to find the wisdom locked in, hidden, obvious sometimes, the wisdom that comes from knowledge. So it's a process. And then it, once I have this knowledge, I need to alphabetize, bring in my inner librarian store and file it. I actually have a picture of a little guy with a ladder that wiggles up and down across all these bookcases and he can access. And he's very skilled at uh, finding. I need to know what I need to know when I need to know it. And I rely on my little inner librarian. And it's his, it's his system, basically, of, uh, or hers, let's be fair, or her system of 
storing it and filing it first by sorting it because I depend on the access. I'm dependent on something other than my, my uh, egoic, my mind, to find this information when I need it. Because I thought I found out, and this is cognizant, part of cognitive dissonance. When I learned in my uh, three-day process, two-day two, two day process, I guess it took a day to recover, of awakening, of non-abiding awakening to abiding awakening, from impermanent to permanent, which there's no going back, and I always have the same kind of uh, sharing when I talk about this. Oh, one of the first things was discovering in my visualization as I visual it was all very visual this two and a half days were very very visual and I know that's individualizes how I experience events but that's all I got I wouldn't I don't know how you would visualize it how you would experience how you have if in case you have but the uh, Library of Alexandria, the books came to me, boom, 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 layer after layer, bookcase after bookcase was spilled, and I would quickly absorb every bit of information that was available. And then I realized, well, I was absorbing information that wasn't readily available. Uh, so I realized that I was in a state where I knew everything that has been known, is known, as well as will be known. And this is the beginning of cognizant dissonance. Dissonance means disorder, uh, inability for your something to function because of overwhelm. So I'll talk more specifically, but this was the first cognizant dissonance because my mind told me that it's impossible to know everything, yet I did. And for those few glorious hours, it was all there. was all there immediately available. Well, if you can imagine how taxing, I think you can imagine, this be post-imagination, beyond imagination, to, be, to have this kind of access. But it was as real as anything has been real for me. There it was. I knew it all. And... Just as slippery as knowing it all this was evaporating, but I rest assured that the source, my soul, the source greater, my Atman, someone greater than my limited little egoic self was utilizing that information. And then the next thing happened to me that's directly cognizant dis dissonance is the ability to reconcile diametrically opposed concepts at the same time. And let me give you an example. What I experienced was free will and destiny. Now, when I went through everything about free will, I was 100% certain and sure that free will was correct. I embraced it 100%. Then I switched to destiny. And destiny was equally as clearly 100% correct. So I hear it had destiny and free will, both accepting both, both of them. Yes, this is true. This is true. This is it. This is it. And my mind didn't explode. Cognizant dissonance is exactly this is when you have, I say, diametrically opposite, polar opposites. How can free will and destiny be equally true at the same time? Not only, this was the beginning of the, the explosion of duality for me, because I'd always seen, like everyone else, in the egoic sense, I think it's protection or maybe it's control, who knows. But all the insidious things that the ego is known for to keep us on an uneven keel. We want to be on an even keel. 
So the idea that you yeah, had to accept this or I had to accept this, you know, and it, it was everything that you could think of opposites, that love and hate. I saw that they were exactly, how's that possible? Love and hate are exactly the same things. It's one thing, in fact. Not both being equal, but boom, reconciling. This was the end of non-duality. Seeing the world as either or, me or them. This is the end of separation and division. And this, of course, only became possible when I totally had surrendered to the process that I was experiencing. So, well, as always, thou knows better than I. So, this was part, and I've read other people that shared this experience that uh, uh, probably, may, I'm sure, in, a, in another way. But I wanted to share this today because uh, I'm able, I, I'm, opposites, my mind just became more elasticized. I don't know. I'm able to stretch it and stretch it to the point where I could actually learn to leave it behind because I'm not my mind, I'm not my body. Thou art that. That is Brahman. My expression is Atman. My soul expression, the expression of my soul, Atman, and the culmination of Brahman, the idea that my lifetime was nothing more than a drop, a wave hits a rock, and a ro drops. And this was the Atman. It's made of exactly the same element as the water, but it would just come, it seemed individualized that you could see it, but it would merge back into all that it ever could be the ocean of awareness, as I'm very fond to say, because my name in English means ocean of awareness. 